my name is Erin Ruggieri, and I am one of the three marketing coordinators at BCIT in the School of Health Sciences. And thank you for joining us tonight for our magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, info session. So tonight, we're really happy to have you join us on this very snowy evening if you're in the Lower Mainland. Uh, our session tonight will be presented by Ray Lee, our program head. But before we get started, I want to go over a few things. The first of those being... Uh, that I wanted to acknowledge or, that, or share that the British Columbia Institute of Technology acknowledges that our campuses are located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam. So today we're going to have a welcome and introduction. That's kind of part I'm doing right now. Uh, we're going to do a poll question, and then we're going to have our presentation and program overview uh, and some information about program advising. And then at the end, we're going to have a question and answer. So that leads me to the next kind of bit of information you need to know. While you're in this Zoom chat, we'd prefer that you leave your camera off um, and stay muted, but you're welcome to uh, leave your camera on if you wanted to see your lovely face, but please do stay muted uh, just to limit any interference. Uh, as you may have heard when you entered, this session is being recorded. Uh, we will, we're will we recording it so that we can post it on our website later for anyone who wasn't able to make this session. And you're also going to get a copy of the recording after the session uh, within about a week's time. As we go along tonight, you're welcome to put any questions you might have into the chat function at uh, either the bottom or the top of the screen, depending on how you got it set up on your end. Um, or you may hold questions until the end of the presentation. Some of the questions in the chat we'll try to answer as we go along. Others we will hold till the end. Uh, so again, I hope that answers everybody's questions about how to proceed. Um, and I think Darren might be able to put a little message in the chat so everyone sees where that pops up. Darren, if you could do that. And uh, before I introduce Ray, or as I introduce Ray, I'm going to put up our poll question. Ray, is that okay with you? Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Erin. Okay, so we're going to do our MRI poll question first. See how much everyone knows about MRI. So this should have just, just appeared on your screen. So what does a patient have to wear when they get an MRI? Your choices are a helmet, a lead apron, earplugs, or protective eyewear. So if everyone could just click on one of those, let's which one you think is the best answer. Okay, looks like we've got those who have answered. So I'm gonna hit end poll, I'm gonna share the results. And Ray, can you tell us who is correct? All right, so if you answered earplugs, you are correct. Uh, nice to see the majority of us had chosen the right answer perfect so maybe just to give a little bit of background as well why you need earplugs uh is because an mri if you've uh, had one you already know but it is quite noisy uh that's just from our uh gradient coils uh, within the machine that are producing uh, uh, additional magnetic fields to help us image different planes and that's what contributes to that very very loud noise in the machine so yeah, so let's go into what MRI is uh, with a very brief description. Uh, so an MRI machine helps us produce uh, sectional imaging of the body uh, in a lot of different planes, uh, which we'll go over uh, in a little bit. Uh, MRIs are a non-invasive uh, imaging modality uh, that allows us to image uh, anything that's going in uh, on in the body from head to toe. Uh, and it's uh, growing in popularity uh, because of its uh, ability uh, to produce very high resolution imaging uh, and it's quite safe for the patient uh, to get these uh, imaging done. Uh, so what the machine consists of is a very strong uh, external magnetic field, which has to be cooled down to negative 269 degrees Celsius. Uh, to align all those uh, protons in your body uh, when and we use your water molecules in your body to uh, obtain our images. Uh, and then we use radio frequencies on top of that to energize your uh, the protons and then your protons will emit a signal which is captured by an antenna and then that's how we get our MRI imaging. So what does an MRI machine do? So our uh, MRI machine uh, on the next slide, uh, like I said, produces sexual anatomy in any spatial direction. Uh, its main usages for imaging are uh, neurology studies uh, for us to image inflammation, uh, cancer, bones, uh, muscles, and joints, and uh, blood vessels and the heart. So it is quite robust in terms of what its major applications are. 
Uh, but like I said, uh, all studies from head to toe can be imaged with MRI. Uh, it's a very popular modality for imaging because of its versatility and, uh, and its uses of non-ionizing uh, radiation to acquire the MRI images. So it's safe for the patients and the technologists. So on the next slide, uh, we have a uh, sample MRI image just to kind of give you uh, a look to see what we can visualize. So um, we were talking about uh, being able to image in different planes. So this is a sideways view or a sagittal um, plane view of our uh, cervical spine or your neck. So here you can see that we have a good visualization of your vertebrae of the spinal cord and canal. Uh, and if you look closely on the right picture, uh, your um, you can see a little black bulge coming out from behind one of the vertebrae uh, that is pinching the spinal cord. So it gives us a really good um, uh, high resolution picture so we can look at the involvement of the spinal cord. And then on the left, you have your normal sort of uh, image to uh, do a quick comparison. Uh, this is a great example of text neck. So people who are on their phones quite a lot and are having their necks in that very flex position uh, can uh, uh, potentially suffer from a, a disc herniation, uh, which is what the right image uh, depicts. So uh, on the next slide, um, it kind of outlines um, how do we make these MRI images. So we touched upon the very strong magnetic field and the radio frequencies and then the protons in your body. Uh, in terms of a strong magnetic field, we, we need a very, very strong field in order to align the protons in your body. So uh, the uh, image that is on the slide shows you what the Earth's magnetic field is. Um, so the uh, conversion from 45 micro Tesla, uh, Tesla being the unit uh, that we use uh, to uh, describe the strength of our MRI machines is uh, 0.000045 Tesla. And our standard MRI machine runs at 1.5 Tesla with uh, new models that are being um, placed into hospitals and clinics being three Tesla. So for comparison, we have a 1.5 Tesla being 33,000 times the Earth's magnetic field. And then the newer MRI machines at three Tesla being 66,000 times the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, and then uh, we also have our research MRI machines, which start off at seven Tesla and go up to 11 Tesla. Uh, so um, looking at the uh, picture itself, you can see that our um, the, the field strengths required are quite strong. Um, some of you who have may have been looking into uh, MRI recently may have run across a uh, a headline uh, about two or three weeks ago about a man uh, who died um, that concealed a, a, a loaded gun and brought it into a MRI suite. Uh, this was in Brazil, where uh, the man had a concealed loaded gun uh, on his waistband and was accompanying his um, mother into the scan room. And uh, the MRI technologist um, uh, had screened the patients, but the patient um, didn't uh, actually forgot that he had this gun on him. Uh, got close enough to the magnet, and then the gun pulled out of his holster, and then the uh, gun discharged and shot him uh, in the abdomen, and he ended up dying. Um, so um, it is a very, very strong magnet, but this is what we need to uh, obtain our images. So if you've had an MRI before, uh, on the next slide, we kind of go over um, where our MRI machines are located. So we have our uh, hospitals, we have our clinics, and we have even mobile units. Uh, but if you've had an MRI, you've, you've probably may have noticed that all the MRI suites are always located on the ground floor. Uh, this is because um, uh, in combination with the uh, magnetic fields and all the equipment that's needed, the cooling system, uh, most MRI machines weigh four to seven tons, which is about the equivalent to an adult elephant. So uh, in order to have the correct infrastructure, uh, these uh, MRI suites are usually located on the ground floor or even below the floor. Okay, so uh, now that we can get into the academics uh, here at BCIT, uh, we have two program pathways for MRI. Uh, the first one is the advanced certificate, 
uh, which are going to be geared for those who have already a background in another imaging modality, uh, such as sonography, medical radiography, nuclear medicine, or radiation therapy. Um, this advanced certificate is an, is an online part-time program. And then we have our second pathway, which is our MRI diploma, which is our in-person full-time program. And, the, and this is for students that do not have that previous healthcare experience uh, and are not working in an imaging modality already. So uh, we'll kick things off first with the advanced certificate, and then we'll discuss the diploma program uh, shortly after. So for the advanced certificate, like I said, uh, if you are in, um, interested in advancing your career, uh, if you are a technologist that uh, can work independently or as part of the team, and you can work under pressure because it is a high pressure um, modality, uh, you may want to consider uh, MRI as uh, as your next career path. So as previously stated, you will need your diploma or degree in nuclear medicine, medical radiography, sonography, or radiation therapy. Uh, you will also have to have active current registration with the CMRT or Sonography Canada. And you will also have to uh, fill out our MRI safety screening form, which is what we give all of our patients as well in MRI, just to ensure that you are safe to work in the MRI environment, which has that very strong magnetic field. Uh, additional considerations uh, to determine if MRI is right for you is that our MRI scanners are generally 24-7. Uh, uh, MRI technologists are, uh, we work under shift scheduling, so we have to be available in the days, evenings, weekends, nights. Uh, you have to have the ability to work independently during these off hour shifts as well, but to be able to work collaboratively as a team during the day shifts. Uh, some MRI sites also work with acute patients, so very sick patients. So uh, patients that come in uh, with trauma or uh, stroke or um, ICU patients, uh, and uh, you'll be working alongside multiple uh, healthcare uh, professionals. So you have to be able to be uh, interprofessional, collaborative, and uh, being able to work under pressure. Uh, for those who had an MRI as well, uh, you may feel you you may have felt a bit claustrophobic as you've had your scan done, um, just because the uh, tube that the patients go into uh, is quite narrow. So you have to be um, very patient care focused. Uh, you have to have good uh, communication skills uh, to be able to communicate with your patient to get them through the exams. Uh, so that's another consideration. Uh, and also as well, just to touch upon the screening form, um, when you fill out this questionnaire, it'll just help us determine if you are um, okay with working in the uh, environments before you actually get accepted into the program. So um, on the next slide, we have a program overview. So uh, this is a part-time online program. Uh, it, it includes a 16-week clinical at uh, a site that you uh, that's near where you reside. Uh, in terms of the academic courses, we have six online courses. Uh, and then upon completion of the advanced certificate, you can continue on to complete your bachelor's of health science uh, right at BCIT as well. Um, uh, as part of the advanced certificate program, there is also a bursary uh, that is available from BCIT through the Ministry of Health. Um, when you get uh, closer to the completion of the program, where you can receive money to complete your last two uh, theory courses and then to cover uh, your clinical costs and your certification exam costs as well. So the entrance requirements into the advanced certificates uh, are uh, the English component. So you needed the English Studies 12 at the 67% or three credits of post-secondary uh, equivalent uh, English course or humanities or social science. Um, you will also, um, as previously stated, this uh, diploma or degree from one of the four disciplines uh, as, uh, as noted there. So medical radiography, nuclear medicine, uh, sonography or radiation therapy. And of course, if you don't have one of these four modalities, then the uh, upcoming diploma program would be something that you would be interested in. 
As for the non-entrance, uh, the, the non-academic entrance requirements, um, you will be required to fill out the MRI screening uh, form just to make sure that you are once again safe to work in the uh, high magnetic field um, environment. And then the uh, active registration through the CMRT or Sonography Canada, which are the um, regulating bodies for the mentioned four different uh, professions. Our program details in terms of our start dates for our uh, advanced certificate program is that we have three intakes every single year. Uh, we have one in January, April, and September, which coincide with our three academic terms, which are the winter, spring, and fall terms. Our, our application period is open year round, but depending on when you apply will determine uh, when your start date is. So. Um, it would be good to know what term you would like to start in. Uh, something to note is that the maximum time to complete the advanced certificate program is three years. Um, so you want to be able to finish your theory courses, um, usually in about a year, year and a half, and then uh, enroll into your clinical course uh, straight after uh, to complete the 16-week clinical term uh, in order to give yourself the best chance of success for your uh, national certification exam. And just to touch upon the admission process here, so after you apply, your application will be reviewed by admissions uh, to ensure that you have all the entrance requirements, and this process can take uh, an upwards of four weeks. Uh, the entry into this program is on a first qualified basis, and there are limited seats uh, available for each term. So if you meet the requirements and a seat is available, you will be offered the seat. And then once you are offered the seat, you'll be asked to pay a commitment fee to hold that place. And then the tuition for your first term will be due 60 days before the start of classes. Um, and you'll be informed uh, through an electronic letter from BCIT's admissions department. And the commitment fee is $500. So um, the uh, next credential we want to touch upon is now our MRI diploma program. So as we were previously stating, uh, if you do not have uh, a, a diploma or a bachelor's in one of the four imaging modalities, then the MRI diploma would be something that would be more suitable. So our MRI diploma is a two-year full-time program at the Burnaby BCIT campus with one year of academics on campus and then one year of your clinical placement. Uh, the clinical placements are offered around BC, so uh, that includes the lower mainline up in the interior uh, in the Northern uh, Health Authority and also on Vancouver Island. And the MRI diploma seats are only available to BC residents only. Our program um, start date uh, is uh, upcoming now in January 2024, so we have one cohort start every year in January. Our application um, are, is open now for the first round uh, for this January 2024 start. So um, the, the seats are open now, or our applications are being accepted from now to May 15th. Uh, if there are still seats available, then we will open up our applications for a second round, which will start on May 16th to uh, September 15th. And then once again, if there are seats still available, then we will open up from September 16th until the seats are filled. Uh, so you must uh, submit a complete application, including all supporting documents by the deadline date for us to review your application. So the application steps, uh, this will be the same for the advanced certificate, is that once the application opens up, which it's open right now, um, you can log in and review uh, the online application. Um, you can work on filling out the application at your own pace. Um, and it doesn't go to admissions until you pay the application fee. Uh, the date that you apply doesn't have an impact on your application because we will wait until uh, May 15th to look at the applications. Um, you just have to have your um, application in before the deadline. Um, for the application process, um, you uh, will first, uh, we will first um, review all entrance requirements and the application processing dates. 
Uh, and then you can determine if you need to upgrade any of your academic courses. Uh, BCIT does offer upgrading uh, courses, which are outlined on the uh, on our program webpage, in terms of which uh, courses at BCIT you can take that will be equivalent to what we're looking for. Uh, and program advising can assist you with this if you have any questions. Uh, ensure that when you apply online, that you have all the required documents, uh, such as your transcripts, uh, ready to scan, uploaded as PDF files. Um, if you have any questions about this process, admissions, once again, can walk you through this step by step. And then once you are ready to apply online, uh, you can visit uh, bcit.ca slash apply, and the application fee is $90. Uh, the application process is all online, so you will need to convert your official transcripts and any uh, other additional documents uh, into PDF files. So as of the uh, academic entrance requirements for the MRI diploma program, is that you will have to have um, English 12, math, uh, sorry, pre-calculus 12, physics 12, and anatomy and physiology 12, all at 73%. Um, of course, you have the equivalencies uh, that are noted there and are also stated on the program website. And these are minimums. Um, and in terms of our non-academic requirements, we have the same MRI screening form as the advanced certificate. Um, we also have a two additional forms. We have a physical and program requirements form, uh, which uh, just uh, outlines that you are aware of our physical requirements from our technologists and what the program requirements are in terms of clinical placements. Uh, and then we have our mandatory application questionnaire, which is just our way of uh, trying to figure out um, how well suited you are to be in healthcare. So there are just some general questions open-ended where uh, you can write down and submit that to us. Uh, and the last piece for the non-academic requirements is the CASPER and snapshot um, requirements. So the CASPER is a uh, online written exam, uh, which you can find more information on their website. And the link is also in the on the program website. Uh, that just gives us a, a, a basis of um, the competencies of a healthcare professional and whether or not you meet those. And the snapshot is our way of kind of seeing you face to face, but not really because it's done over uh, over a webcam. But it just allows us to kind of um, to kind of meet you in that manner. Uh, you have three short questions to answer, uh, and then uh, we get to kind of see that. So it's sort of like a short interview. Um, if you visit the uh, CASPER website, there are three upcoming CASPER write dates. There is one on uh, March the 7th at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific, and the, uh, all these times will be in Pacific. So you have March 7th at 2 p.m., uh, March 6th at 5 p.m., and then May 2nd at 2 p.m., so as a reminder, you will have to have your CASPER and your snapshot completed uh, in order to have a complete application that we can review. Um, I guess while we're on the academic entrance requirements, there is also um, a short listing list that is on the program website. Uh, because this program is a competitive entry program, uh, there is a list of criteria on the program website that will help you determine uh, how to make your application more competitive. So if you are interested in that, on top of the basic academic entrance requirements, uh, please visit the program website in order to view that list. Okay, uh, transcripts and documents. So as mentioned, as part of your online application, uh, you will need to upload documents um, for us to assess your uh, application. Uh, you can download your official digital transcripts or you convert or you can convert your transcripts and documents to PDF files. Uh, and then information on how to convert documents to PDF files is available on the BCIT website. Uh, just please uh, to be uh, ensure that you do upload all required documents to minimize delays in your application processing. Um, the next slide for the admissions process um, is uh, identical to the advanced certificate process, so we won't touch too much upon that, um, but essentially um, you will uh, submit your application, our department will review the documents, and then we will let admissions know of the outcome. 
of the uh, applications. And then if you are accepted, uh, you'll have to complete a couple of other items uh, once you're conditionally accepted, such as a criminal record check, uh, immunization review, uh, your CPR certificate. And then at that point, then you'd pay your commitment fee of $500. So as far as career outlooks in MRI, uh, it is a very high demand field right now. Um, as noted in the advanced certificate uh, portion, um, the Ministry of Health has um, uh, created a bursary for BCIT MRI advanced certificate students uh, to help um, negate the shortages that we're seeing out in the uh, hospitals right now for uh, MRI technologists. So as of right now, it's a great time uh, to get into the field. There's a lot of job opportunities for advancement, a lot of openings throughout BC if you don't plan on working um, um, in the lower mainland. Uh, after graduation, there you can definitely take your skills out to the different parts of BC or even across Canada uh, with this diploma. Um, as, as we were talking before, MRI scanners are not just found in the hospitals. So if you have an interest in working at a clinic or even in a research facility using those really, really high strength field uh, magnets, um, there are definitely opportunities to do so. Uh, in terms of our pay scale, um, right in $2 at the hospital with, uh, with an increase if you work at, the, uh, at an MRI clinic. Um, with our new agreement at the hospital, uh, which had just come out uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, MRI did get the largest increase in wage uh, compared to the other uh, medical radiation technologists, which is kind of the umbrella that we're under, that include uh, x-ray technologists, nuclear medicine technologists, and radiation therapy technologists. So um, yeah, if you've done uh, any research and you are um, you know, wondering about the wage pay, uh, MRI did get quite a uh, an increase uh, where we'll, I, I believe we're going to be making about 52 or $53 an hour at the top of the scale. Uh, and just to kind of close off the MRI portion, uh, we do have a, a few different testimonials. So we have a video testimonial from Harman Basra, who, ha who is in a, uh, a very recent MRI advanced certificate graduation. So I'll let uh, Aaron just play this short clip. Hello everyone, my name is Harman and I'm a recent graduate of the MRI program at BCIT. I just wanted to take this time to share a couple things about the program. First and foremost, I liked how each module and course was set up as a building block towards your clinical session and ultimately becoming an MRI technologist. As a practicing MRI technologist, I really enjoy working with the vast diversity of people from neonates to geriatrics especially in finding a diagnosis for their symptoms or their disease. I hope this little snippet helps you in your journey in becoming an MRI technologist. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so uh, this is also a written testimonial um, from the same student, Harmon. So I'll, I'll just uh, pause me for a few seconds so you have some time to read that. What do you think, Aaron? Ready to? Yep. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a fast reader or, or a very slow <laughs> reader. Okay, and then uh, and then we have Cassidy, uh, who's also given the testimonial. Uh, Cassidy, uh, I'm proud to say, had uh, achieved the highest uh, certification exam mark in Canada with our last rate. Um, so she obviously uh, was a very strong student and excelled well uh, within our MRI Advanced Certificate Program. So once again, I'll just give a few seconds for you to read this. Okay, I hope that's good there. Uh, so we've talked a lot about the two program options for MRI, the advanced certificate and the diploma. And we've also talked a lot about the application details. And I see that Maggie has been extremely busy answering your questions in the chat. And of course, some of those she will leave to, to, for Ray to answer once we get to the Q&A portion. Before we get to that, 
I just wanted to talk a little bit about how BCIT uh, is not just here for you to apply and get in. We really want to support your success once you do get into a program at BCIT. And, and so some of the services that we offer once you become a student are listed here on the screen. Uh, the first one is our Indigenous Services Department, and they offer a welcoming gathering place for uh, students uh, who identify as Indigenous or others that are interested in learning more about uh, Indigenous peoples groups in Canada. So they're a great resource. We have our Student Financial Aid and Awards. They are your go-to for information about uh, loans, bursaries, uh, any kind of financial aid that might be available. And I know there are some def some entrance awards that uh, we should urge everyone to check out because uh, they can be quite uh, helpful when you start your studies. Accessibility services are for anyone who has a ongoing uh, long-term, maybe not lifelong, but long-term uh, disability or need for accommodation. So if you need uh, accommodation in a, uh, test writing or in the way that your studies are set up, uh, they're your go-to resource. Student Health Services offers a full service medical clinic with nurse and doctor on staff at BCIT's Burnaby campus. Uh, so you can schedule your doctor's appointments uh, in between, before, after classes. Uh, and uh, they also have, I believe, telephone and Zoom appointments still available uh, that they've been doing for a few years now. Counseling and Student Development is right down the hall from Student Health Services, and they have counselors on staff to talk to students about mental health problems, um, relationship issues, anything that you're going through that could benefit from a counsel, counselor. And of course, it's all confidential. None of that goes back to your instructors at all. And Recreation Services is one of my favorites. Uh, they have a full service gym, weight room, uh, all kinds of cardio machines. Uh, they have uh, intramurals. Uh, fitness classes at lunchtime and uh, before school and after school. Uh, they also have a big, huge TV set up. So if there's a game going on that uh, people want to watch, uh, there's a great place to kind of gather and watch whatever's taking part, taking place in the world of sports. Uh, program advising. So if you guys have questions that don't get answered here tonight, or if you have questions that you think about after this, uh, we urge you to contact Program Advising. So Ray is a great resource about the program, about the profession, about what it's like to work in MRI, uh, but uh, Program Advising are the go-to people, uh, and Maggie is one of them, and in the chat there, uh, who can answer your questions about how to apply, whether or not your skills and experience matches up with uh, what we're looking for, and, and details of that nature. So you can see on screen here, uh, their ways to contact, uh, but I will urge you to check the website first before you uh, contact because these hours listed on the screen here and days do tend to change. So uh, don't take these as, uh, as, as gospel truth there. Uh, as you continue your journey of learning about BCIT, we urge you to keep in touch. Uh, you can follow School of Health Sciences on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Uh, follow us, interact with us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and we'd love you to kind of see what life is like at BCIT. If you're interested in learning more, we also offer BCIT campus tours. Uh, we have a spend a day program that you can look into. Um, and again, Big info we just had two weeks ago, info sessions like tonight's and our program advising department, like I already mentioned. So now uh, I think we're going to get to our question and answer section. Um, so I wonder if, um, I know Maggie's been very busy, like I said. I know Maggie had said uh, that she was going to save some questions for Ray. Hi, Erin. Did you want me to take over the um, Q&A component? I you um, want to be comfortable with that, yes. Is that all right? I've amalgamated several of the questions and I can, oh, good, um, good. I, I've answered a lot. I had quite a few come in directly to me and also in the chat that I responded to probably about 30. So that's great. And there's some that I'd like to read aloud that were either common questions or questions that were more for Ray to respond to. So let me just go through some of those and I'm just going to go in order everyone. So I will likely get to your question. So just please be patient. So Ray, the first question is from Alyssa, and she asks, uh, where are the advanced program clinical sites located? Are these, I guess that she's referring to the um, advanced certificate, Is are the program clinical sites over all over BC? Are they specific locations? If you could elaborate a little bit more on that. Great. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so if you are part of the advanced certificate program, uh, which is open uh, across Canada, if you are a MRT that is outside of BC, uh, you can definitely do your clinical um, closer to where you live. 
So uh, for a lot of these students, uh, there are they are already working at a hospital, hopefully with an MRI department, and they can uh, then set up their MRI clinical to be at that hospital or somewhere close by. Uh, we will not make you come up to BC to your clinical, so you can definitely do it where you live. Awesome, thank you. And then Faith asks, um, what is the need for MRI technicians in the following years? Will there be enough job openings for everyone finishing this program to get full-time work? Yeah, it's uh, a good question as well. Um, obviously, it's very hard to kind of predict the future, especially in a few years from now. Um, but, you know, because MRI is a growing modality um, where hospitals are getting, you know, their first MRI uh, machine or getting the second, third, or even fourth one, um, you know, with that huge expansion that's happening, um, and obviously with support from uh, the Ministry of Health here at BC, um, I think there uh, there is a great need for us to fill all of these uh, different departments now, with them being kind of popping up now. Um, so I, you know, for the foreseeable future, I do see quite a need for MRI technologists and. Um, I guess I can give some background around the diploma program and why this has come to be this year, is that usually uh, we keep, MRI technologists are usually graduated as a second discipline through that advanced certificate. So for us to graduate an MRI technologist usually takes about four years or so. Um, so um, there are just a bunch of shortages. We can't graduate in uh, MRI technologists quick enough. So then we have a two-year diploma program to kind of help with that need. Um, we are still planning on um, running both streams, so there will be kind of two different ways for MRI technologists to kind of graduate from BCIT. Um, but yeah, just back to the question, there is, I think, quite a need in the next few years, just based on the expansion that's happening right now. Awesome. Thank you. And then Lauren has asked a little bit more of a specific question, but um, asked, do you accept registered cardiac sonographers? I'm assuming, yeah, this is for the advanced certificate mm -hmm. um, as one of the entry requirements. So um, Lauren is uh, registered as a cardiac technologist at the moment. Great. Um, as long as the, um, as long as you have a, sono a sonography Canada or uh, the, um, there's another uh, regulating body that that's kind of going, you know, kind of slipping my mind right now, um, that you would be kind of associated with as a cardiac sonographer, that, sh that would be fine. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And then David has asked, um, this sounds like when you're actually working in the field, do you ever run into scenarios where multiple employees working in the same imaging department need help coordinating the MRI clinical placement timing so as not to disrupt patient care at their current hospital? Um, sorry, can can you go over that? Sorry, something in the chat caught my eye. So I, sorry. I, oh, I no problem, no problem. Sorry. Yeah, David has asked, um, do you ever run into scenarios where multiple employees working in the same imaging department need help coordinating their MRI clinical placement timing so as not to disrupt patient care at their current hospital? Uh, no, not, not really. Um, we do try our best to kind of coordinate well, we let the, the departments themselves kind of coordinate the student schedule in order to not impact staffing or patient care. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't think that that's that's a real issue. OK, awesome. No. And Suniena has asked for the flexible learning. So obviously for the advanced certificate, um, can we take as many courses as we wish each term after the first course has been completed? Uh, technically, you can, but it's probably not recommended. Um, we generally like to uh, see students uh, complete two to three courses maximum each term uh, because you will be working as uh, taking part in the advanced certificate program. Um, it's really up to your time management, but generally we see students take between one to three courses a term after the first course is completed. Okay, great. And Faith has asked, and I do apologize, I, I probably didn't notice this in the presentation, but I think you must, might have mentioned a bursary. And Faith was asking, can you um, elaborate a little bit more on that bursary? Sure. Uh, the bursary is through the Ministry of Health. Um, it is only available for the advanced certificate program. Um, and uh, that bursary uh, just will aid um, students to complete the program um, at an accelerated rate, hopefully, uh, without having financial uh, a, a negative financial impact. So what that bursary uh, allows um, a student to do is to take the last two theory courses of the advanced certificate program uh, free of charge. 
uh, the bursary will cover the tuition for those two courses. Um, generally, students will have to take a leave of absence for the four month clinical term, which means they're not making money over that four months. Um, so what the bursary will 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 uh, cover is uh, once again course tuition for that uh, clinical course, and it will provide monthly payments in lieu of the lost wages to the students. Uh, generally, it covers about eighty percent of lost wages, uh, and then it covers the national certification exam through the CAMRT, uh, which is about another nine hundred dollars. Um, so all of that is done through the bursary, but once again, that is only available for the advanced certificate students. Okay, great. Thank you. And this is a question from Novena, but also I've seen this question come up multiple times during the uh, presentation. It's regarding the um, diploma and the um, the entrance requirements, sorry, the uh, the first round, second round, third round. Mm -hmm. So essentially, they want to know, would the seats typically all be full by the first round and then if you apply in the second or third round, you will not be considered? Or is it something, I, from my understanding, it's more, um, there's the preferred people within the first round and then it kind of, there's still spaces for the people applying in later rounds, but would you mind just clarifying that, Ray? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we will take all the the complete applications we have after May 15th and assess all of them. Um, the uh, the uh, seats available for the diploma program is 12. Uh, so we will fill some of those seats definitely with our with, with uh, some of these stronger applications that come in, and then for some of the ones that uh, maybe don't meet that level, uh, we may move into the second window and then open up that second window for us to gather more applications. Um, this is just due to the competitive nature of the uh, of the program. Uh, and the low amount of seats that we have, we just want to ensure that we are accepting very strong students. So uh, if we do have very, 12 very strong students at the end of the first window, yes, we could um, fill up all seats for the cohorts. But, um, you know, just based on our last run around um, or go around with our, our diploma program, uh, most likely not, we will have a second window. Uh, but we will try and give um, everyone sort of, I guess, advance notice through our website that um, once all the seats are filled. Okay, awesome. And then Maggie, I'm going to have to interrupt there because we're actually running out of time oh, now okay. uh, for the session. So uh, I know we didn't get to everyone's uh, questions and there were quite a lot of them. I really appreciate you guys being so eager to learn more about this program. Uh, so if you have any questions that were not answered tonight, please note the two email addresses on your screen. Uh, send us an email uh, and we will be able to uh, connect with you and talk things over with you, answer any questions. Again, uh, we we, are, we did record this session, so a recording of this session and a copy of the slide deck will be sent out to you via email within about a week or two of this session so that you can re-watch, review, and uh, kind of go through anything that you might have missed the first time around. So I do know that we kind of pushed a lot of information at you very quickly tonight, so I appreciate you uh, holding on and, and listening through all of that. So again, my apologies for not being able to get to everybody, but I hope we uh, we gave you some good information tonight. And uh, thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate all of you coming out tonight. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you, everyone.